Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, I think that's a little bright. We'll try it there. Okay, what we have here is in my electrical work, I've run across an issue that has just driven me crazy. And we'll start off by asking a quick question. I have a module right here. This is the buck boost converter. I have a module right here. This is a buck converter. This is also a buck converter. And this is a, a motor control potentiometer module. What do the, all these have in common? That terminal right there. That is little set screws, and you put your wire in there and you tighten it down. I hate these things. I mean, they're better than the soldering in some cases, I think. But overall, it's hard to get a good connection in there that stays put, especially if you're doing it during prototyping. In other words, you're taking wires in and out and you're moving pieces around. And, and anyway, after a while, this is what you can end up with very easily for that wire, if you can see that. That thing's a mess. And it, and it leads to problems. And they break off easy inside there. So I figured out that I can make my own plug that fits directly into those without any problem. And it'll fit in any of them. And this is it right here. This is my latest type. I have a little red on the side where the terminal is the positive. The black one is black on that on the side here. And I have I used heat shrink. These are just wire ferrules. I bought a kit like this from Amazon. It came with the tool for crimping. And if you know anything about these ferrules, I use the you can use this the 18 gauge, and at some occasions you're going to use the 20 and the 22. But these are the three that you'll probably use in making these. Um, but the 18 fits into that terminal just perfect. Probably if you went with a 20 gauge, you'd get a much nicer end because it's not going in to begin with. You have to make sure you're set up and everything. But once you've done it once, these things work really great. I can take this and on any terminal uh, block, it just fits in there so nice and neat and easy. All you got to do is tighten the screws down. I got a good solid connection here. And it's not going to break off the wires. So, and these are easy to make. I make these in under two minutes. And all you need is those wire ferrules and some heat shrink. Bada bing, bada boom. So let me show you how I made it. And we'll go from, and then we'll see if you have any questions, if any questions pop up. So, basically, you want to take and make a ferrule. So you use your crimper and you take a piece of wire, like right here. You strip it back. I usually twist the wire just a little bit so as to get the ends all together. And then you just slip your ferrule directly on there like that until you can see the ends of the wire here. If they stick out, that's okay. You can trim them off a little later. So then you take your tool, crimping tool, open it up, put the ferrule in the hole. Come down on it, make sure your wire is in place, and then just squeeze it down. And you'll get a three crimping air circles on this thing, if you can see that. It has three different crimps on it. And you got a nice solid connection now. Instead of dealing with multi-strand, you're only dealing with one piece. So that makes it really easy to connect things to it and to add it to other types of apparatus. Like here, you put one of those on there and you use one of these lever caps. That is nice. But anyway, so it's handy to have these ferrules around uh, for the different gauges. But what we're trying to do here today is we're, I'm gonna show you how to take what you learned here. Now we're gonna take it to a new level so that you have that fitting that goes into any of these on any module that you get. And I can move this thing around to any of them and it'll fit all of them without any problem. And then I can take it down to get a good, secure connection that won't fail. So, how do we go from, from this to this? 
So you put your ferrules on just like I did there and then you take your module or any module and you put your wires in there one at a time, put it in there all the way and then tighten the screw down. So that's what we're going to do here. Let me tighten this one down. Oops, before I do that, I'm going to take real quick and take a piece of heat shrink and I'm just going to put it on here since I can't put it on from the other end. Now, I would take these and we put them into in here like so. Make sure you keep that nice and bottomed out and then just tighten that down pretty, pretty snug down on there so you know that it's in place and it's going to stay put. And now we're going to put the other one in. And one thing's for sure, make sure that they're both in the same depth. They should line up to each other when looking at them, down at it. And I just hold that one in now. And tighten this one down on this one. And that alone is not a bad little connection. You can just leave it like that, no problem. But I found that if I take my heat shrink and I stick it down on there like this, and I start at this end and I heat this all up, like so, so that I wrap it tight around the wire first. Now, I can take and move it around. until that push that up there just a little more and now I all you have to do is let that cool down before you take it off you want to make it cool to the touch because if it's warm it's liable to move on you but that is now a done one just like this so that will now go into any of any connector you want to put it in and if I wanted to I could take this snip it here put one here one there and this thing is ready for me to hook up or to put something on there to use it as a test thing real quick and easy they make great little test leads so you can just in just a minute be able to hook up any kind of connector to this just by having two of these little connectors but this is a great little connector and it works really well so once you've made it, now when I, after I made this, the only thing I did different here is I took where the red is, because depending on how much heat, uh, heat shrink you put on here, uh, it may be hard to identify each of, either of these immediately by looking at it. So what I did here is on one half where the red wire is, I used white out on the heat shrink after it was cooled down, and I put hot highlight white all the way around then i colored it with the red scripto uh pen and the reason i did it that way is because if you go straight to the red pen you really can't see it on the black so by whitening it out first that little area then coloring it then you can get a nice bright and now when i take this and if i want to put it in here and i know positive negative i know when i grab this and i look i can slide that right in knowing that I'm on the positive on the positive. So it makes it real easy to identify that you got it hooked up right immediately, right at where you're doing your work. It's a great little plug-in. They're easy peasy to make, as you can see. And when you get done, this should be cool enough now. I can take this off. Just like so. And now I have a connector here, just like that one. I have a connector here that I can take now and put it on virtually any terminal, like these little terminal blocks. It's universal plug-in. So now all I have to do is cut this, and I have two quick plug-ins to plug onto here to start 
being able to hook up to this easily. Okay, so anyway, I don't know if this will help you or not, but like I said, these little ferrules, they're great to have anyway because they're great. Even on other levers like this, the lever clamp or this type where it's got a set screw in there, using a the ferrule really makes you, gives you a better connection than just stranded wire when you go to screw it down or to clamp the lever down on it. This is really works well for a, a ferrule. Do I have one free? There's one. You just put that in there, drop the lever down, and that thing will never come out. That's a better connection than if you went with bare wire, I would suspect. So, anyway, the ferrule is the key. Using it with the heat shrink, you can set up and make your own little plug. And actually, you could do this on any, even on the larger ones if you wanted to. You could put them in place, lock them down. Put hot glue around it a little bit, put your heat shrink on there, heat shrink it all down, and you'd have your own quick plug-in that you could plug in. So, uh, I think you can make your own plug-ins of many different sizes using this technique. All I've done is just so I have something for this little terminal right here, which seems to be a curse. I just really have a hard time keeping my wired in contact in there and not having the little strands break off and stuff. So, this really has helped me to be able to use these type of PCB connectors. So anyway, for what it's worth, it really worked for me. I wanted to share this with you. I am working on my next project, which is an electronic project also. Um, that hopefully is still going to be out in a few days. But I thought I'd take a minute and show this to you real quick because I didn't think about this. But this actually has a lot of uses, I think, as time goes on when you're sitting here it's really easy to make your own terminal and yes i'm rambling on so anyway your thoughts your comments your ideas if you have another way that you do it that you like to use i'd love to hear it always looking for new ideas but this is how i figured out how to get those things to work properly so uh, i want to thank you for coming by I really am interested in hearing your input on that, so leave the comments. I do read them all. If you like this video or you learned something here, hit that like button. It lets me know I'm doing the right thing. Most importantly, though, please come back again and bring your coffee. But come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.